AI has been advancing like crazy over the last couple of years and some people are worried that once it gets to a certain point, it's going to be autonomous and it's going to start to take over the world. And at that point in time, some people believe that we should just unplug the AI and that we might be safe after doing so. But is that actually possible? Um, well, not really, because AI isn't just an entity that is running somewhere that you can simply unplug. It's really just a form of software. So it would be kind of like saying, let's unplug web browsers. I mean, that doesn't really make sense, right? Because web browsers could be running on anybody's computer, completely disconnected from the internet. There are many different kinds of web browsers around, and it doesn't make sense to be able to unplug them. Like, even if you unplug certain computers with browsers on them, that doesn't mean that you've stopped it from happening all over the world. And so the same thing sort of applies with AI, because it's not just an entity that's sitting somewhere it's just a form of software that can be installed on any computer and can be used on any computer. Now, oftentimes we think of AI as these AI models that are hosted by companies like OpenAI or Microsoft or Google, and to some degree, those can be a little bit more controlled, although they're still distributed across thousands of servers. It's just that a single company has more control over those things because they are deploying that software on those servers. So they could theoretically take it down or block access to the internet, you know, at the data center or something like that. But that's assuming that they even have control in this theoretical scenario where AI is taking over because it should be able to spread itself if it gets to that point where it's so dangerous, so to speak. So it could go to different clouds, get on different computers, right? So even at that point, it would be hard to imagine how it would be unplugged. But there's a big problem with that line of thinking too, because AI models can't actually do anything. So, you know, they just expect text input and they're gonna give you a text output. And some of these newer models that are like omnimodal models, they're going to be able to receive images and videos and respond with those things, but they're not actually doing anything. They're not like interacting with the real world. They're not exploring the real world or thinking for themselves. They're just prompted and then they do something to generate a response. So it's not like they're autonomous and actually interacting with the world. They can't start some takeover because there's no agency in what they're doing. Now, you might have also heard of some new AI systems called AI agents, and those integrate uh, the AI models into them, but they have additional code that's running that can actually do certain things. So you might give a task to an AI agent, and there's going to be some code that's going to pass it to an AI model to maybe figure out a plan on how to achieve the certain task that you want it to do. And then it's going to go through all of those steps and try to execute them. But you basically need to have code that's actually gonna facilitate all of those interactions. So maybe it can make some API calls, maybe it can execute some code on the server that it's running on. Uh, and oftentimes these AI agents, again, for safety reasons, just like with any other piece of software, are gonna be bound in a certain environment. So they can't just go and you know take withdraw money from a bank. Like you would need to give them credentials to the bank or it would need to figure out how to hack the bank. And I mean, there's plenty of human people trying to figure out how to do that, right? So it's gonna have the same sort of challenges that any other piece of software or people might have today. And there's no real incentive, there's no like, survival instinct in this AI agent that is going to cause it to veer that far away from the task that it was given. You know, a lot of people are afraid that if we have fully autonomous AI agents, they're just gonna, like if you give it a task of creating paper clips, it's gonna somehow destroy the whole world because it can make more efficient paper clips if there's nobody around to prevent it. Well. I don't think the AI agent tasked with that is going to be given so much authority and so much power to be able to do that. Essentially, I think a lot of these systems are going to be constrained by the environments that we put them in, and it's going to be difficult for them to break out, so to speak, because 
they just don't have any incentive to really do that. So anyway, getting back to the subject at hand, can we just unplug AI when it gets dangerous? The, the answer is no, not really, but we also don't really have to worry about it, I don't think, as much as some people are making it out because it's just like any other software really that's running. And software by itself isn't necessarily dangerous. It's about the people that are using the software to actually do something, and which is why I also believe that, you know, from a safety perspective, the best thing we can do to regulate AI is to really just hold people accountable that do bad things using AI, just like we would with any other kind of tool, right? It's like if somebody stabs somebody with a knife, it's not, up to the knife company to prevent that from happening. It's up to the person to not use the knife in that sort of way. So we should hold the person accountable, not the knife company. And I think the same thing applies with AI. Uh, you know, if you use it in a malicious way, you should be accountable for that. It's the way that you're using the model, just like with any other tool or item that we might have around. There are some people advocating for us passing regulations to ensure that AI never gets to a point where it can be so autonomous and do all of these things and be smarter than people, but that's not really a realistic thing to achieve because there are going to be other countries who have a vested interest in advancing their AI programs and they're just going to ignore any sort of regulations that we impose upon ourselves. So it's really in our best interest to evolve AI to a point where we can have strong AI that can police any sort of malicious AI and prevent bigger problems from happening. Ideally, if we can distribute AI across a large number of people, there are going to be enough people incentivized to take down any sort of malicious AI that starts trying to take over. And again, these are very literal systems. We're not just going to magically have a genie pop out of the bottle that is going to take over the whole world. You got to imagine there's going to be other AI systems trying to prevent malicious behavior from happening and all of the sort of security barriers that we already have surrounding our existing system. They're not going to just be hacked by one AI agent that's gone rogue. We're going to be able to fight back against that and then hold people accountable to ensure that whoever started that AI faces consequences. Anyway, those are some of my latest thoughts on AI. Thanks for watching. Take care.